Today is Saturday, October 10th, 2020, and today I'm thinking about just more misconceptions, things that I used to just assume about Jesus or Christianity, and maybe some of it's on me, maybe some of it's on the media and all the plastic phony Christians out there that who knows their intentions if they're just misguided or they really know that they're that they're saying everything wrong. And let's just get into this. This is Luke chapter 12, and I'm starting at verse 39. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew the Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. And I just really connect with statements like this, where there's more verses. I probably could have looked for them. There's more verses that they make it seem like punishments are not going to be, well, it'll be fair, but not the same for everybody. The punishment is going to fit the crime, I believe, for people who don't make it to heaven. I don't think that everybody is going to face the same damnation. Just a personal belief that I have is that a lot of people who weren't just completely heinous, but who maybe heard about the gospel, but then rejected it, or they just live their life worrying about fleshly things and they're not going to make it to the kingdom. I don't think that all of those people are going to have like their flesh burning constantly. And I mean, maybe, but it seems like the Bible explains that there's going to be different levels of punishment and The Bible makes it clear that the people that get the worst punishment are the ones who know the truth, but then they reject it. And I just think of that all the time about all the phony people out there that they know about the Orange 33 secrets, but they don't tell anybody about it. And to me, those are the biggest phonies. I I just don't think that it's going to be good for them in the end when Jesus comes back and it's like, so you knew about this whole big deception, you knew about the orange 33 deception, but you didn't tell anybody about it, but you just tried to pretend like everything was going fine. You, you were keeping this huge secret, but then pretending to be a good Christian every day. And I just personally believe that that's going to be the worst thing. That's, that's the worst punishment for people who knew about all the secrets, but they just pretended like they didn't notice it or pretended like it wasn't there. I'll never be able to get past that. All the people in my life that I know, they know about the secret, and but they pretend to be Christian. They pretend to be good Christians a lot of times too. A lot of times these are the people that they say things about, oh, Jesus is my boyfriend, and they make their whole life about Christianity, and they have all these grand displays of going on, going on trips, missionary trips, and going to all the Christian events with all the guitars and singing, and you know the type of people I'm talking about. Those people very often know the truth, and they're not telling you about it, and they're a part of a big Orange 33 club and not telling you about it, so I don't understand what goes through their mind when they pretend to live a Christian lifestyle. Stripe, too, is interesting. Stripe is 33 and 23 stripes here is just i love reading things like this that correct that false notion that i used to have of jesus from hearing the street preachers and hearing the radio preachers go on endlessly about love 
And maybe that's a, a nice message for some people, I guess, uh, but it's just not the truth. And I've just always connected more with statements like this. Burn it all. I want to watch it burn. I'm come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it al if it be already kindled? I just like that that verse too. It's really interesting. It kind of answers the question of, hey, why are we still waiting here? And it's because it's going to keep getting worse and worse and worse until it hits the very last point. And then it's all going to burn. And it's kind of like letting the weeds grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and then lighting it all on fire. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one household divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? And... I think that this just fits for today. Look at all the people that are totally buying in to this, this PSYOP year. This is just a whole year long PSYOP and it's become so obvious that it's a bunch of BS, but people are still, their faces glued to the TV, totally in trance, hypnotized by the clown freak show around them. And very few people are watching and waiting for Jesus to come back compared to people watching and waiting for the newest thing on TV to tell them what to be afraid of. Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Just in, this is the end of the chapter, that's why I put it in here. And I think that this part is just telling you that you're not supposed to, because some people get a little crazy with the truth and with trying to tell people the truth. And me, I have my YouTube channel and I, I do try to make my whole life about this, but I don't go out in the town square and start berating people and starting arguments with police officers because you're going to get thrown in prison and uh there actually are i know somebody that they kind of i don't know if it's like a mental breakdown or something but like spazzed out about all this this truth stuff and they did end up getting put in prison so i just think that this is interesting verses here i think it also kind of goes with the turn the other cheek thing you know me personally I've been to the store now a few times. In the beginning, I was able to avoid it at all costs, but now I've been to the store a few times. I'll put my mask on to go to the grocery store and get my groceries. Sure, I'll take the mouse down when I'm in an aisle by myself, but I'm not here to start fights with people. I'm just here to speak the truth. And I know every day when I wake up what I'm doing and it's just, I'm waiting for this all to be over. And I just have no investment in it, no emotional investment in this anymore. And I hate this world and I'm so ready for it to burn. And that's where I am every day of my life. I just want it to be over. I don't want to be here anymore. And I just want Jesus Christ to come back. And he is going to come back very soon. All the signs are there. One of the biggest signs, I haven't been talking about it just because it's everything. It's just so noticeable is the time speeding up. It has become... Just crazy. Do you know that this is almost my 40th, this is my 37th daily video. I've almost, almost done 40 of these daily videos. It seems like a blur. Every morning when I wake up and I'm like, oh, time to make my new video. It feels like I was just doing that. I still get comments from people all the time about how 
they have no time anymore, how going to the grocery store, this is something that people really can relate with. Going, going to the grocery store, it takes your whole day up and it drains you of all your energy and you're, that's it. And do you know how insane that is? That's not how life used to be. Going to the grocery store used to just be a little thing out of your day that you would go do, and now it's a whole event. And that's not even because of the, the whole mask thing. It's because time is moving more quickly. Anyways, don't let anyone tell you COVID-19 is not something to fear. Look at this propaganda piece at a time. Don't let anybody tell you to not be scared, people. You should only fear God. And I just, I'll stop with this. I live in an area surrounded by old people. Just the part of town that I live in, it's like where all the old people live. And uh, nobody, there's no, there's nothing happening. There, one person died, one of my neighbors died, but they had cancer and it, they died like right before all this stuff started coming out. All of my neighbors are perfectly fine and uh, it's just the cold. And the cold is just a natural part of the body. There, There's a reason that there is no cure for the common cold. And I believe that the obvious reason is that it comes from within us. The cold is probably just a way that the body deals with whatever, <clears throat> whatever it's been building up all year. Uh, I don't know exactly why it happens in the cold months, but that's just, it's a natural part of the way our bodies work, I believe. And, uh, what they show us, the picture of COVID or whatever, the, what they show us viruses these days, they're little blobby CGI things. And I mean, even the ones that look like legit images, they look like blobs. They don't look like what they showed us back in the day, back in school, what they showed us a virus was, was this alien looking cr crystal creature. And I don't know. I don't know why I'm ranting about this right now. I'm just so sick of, of people caring about fake things. And I think that it's just the whole media, the whole, that's where people live. People live in TV land where they think that everything on TV is reality. And I'm just sick of it. And I can't wait for truth, for true reality, for living in a place where things are true and meaningful and where life matters and isn't, and we aren't just surrounded by a bunch of liar, phony hypocrites. It's terrible. This place sucks. It's going to burn. Praise God it's going to burn. It can't burn soon enough. I'm ready. God bless everyone.